Isaiah chapter 1. Take your Bible, turn there. Isaiah chapter 1. Let's do a little Bible lesson, all right? Let's, let's, let's see from the Bible how we got here. Because in spite of all the wacko conspiracy theories out there, America did used to be a decent place to live. Some of you are old enough to remember that. Some of you know that the core of America for years was the Ten Commandments and the Word of God. That was the core of America. Now you got some people saying, America's always been Babylon. It's always been Freemasons. And Freemasons run everything. Everybody was a Freemason when they said, no, that's not true. It's not historically true. It's not accurate to say that. We had 150 years before the Declaration of Independence was ever signed of one community after another being organized and its political leaders basing their laws and their doctrines and their ideas upon the Word of God. 150 years of that being the establishment of this nation. And everybody that came from anywhere in Europe and came to any one of the 13 colonies, they came into a colony that, for all intents and purposes, was governed by the Word of God. That's what established America. That's where we were. We used to be a nation of faith. By the way, your denomination used to be a denomination of faith used to believe the bible now they don't believe the bible anymore it, it regardless of the differences in doctrine between the presbyterians and the baptists and whoever else regardless of that they all believed the word of god was the word of god they believed it was final authority they were faithful people faithful to the word of god faithful to prayer faithful to evangelism faithful to the cross that's how we used to be in all of our denominations and all of our religious backgrounds. As far as Christianity is concerned, that's how it was. It's not, it's not there anymore. What happened? Let's look and see what happened. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, let's see here. Verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet. They shall be white as snow, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, what is rebellion equated to in the Bible? The sin of witchcraft. You see how it works? If you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword. You know what that sword is? The strange woman in Proverbs has a, her mouth, her tongue is sharper than, or a, her tongue is a two-edged sword. You shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now look at verse 21. How is the faithful city become a what a harlot or as the article said us an slut and not just any slut a lesbian slut how is the faithful city become a harlot i remember the first time i read that it as, as god was teaching me things out of the bible i went <gasps> Jerusalem Jerusalem turned into a harlot whereas before she used to be a faithful city now she's a harlot read um, read Ezekiel chapter 16 you'll see it God said I took Jerusalem she was filthy and defiled and I cleaned her up cut her umbilical cord washed her clean dressed her up, made her beautiful, put earrings on her ears, fixed her hair. I mean, I made, I made her beautiful. And what did she do? 
every guy that walked by. She lay down for. She became a harlot. She trusted in her own beauty. So how is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment. Righteousness lodged in it. But now murderers. You know what they found out? Eric Holder's wife, Eric Holder, the Attorney General of the United States of America, Eric Holder's wife has an ownership stake in an abortion mill. The, the abortion doctor that they're going after right now for doing these post-birth abortions. One of the statements that has come out in court is the doctor said, just because it moved once doesn't mean it's alive. Oh, they threw out three of the charges yesterday. I don't know if he's got any charges left against him. My guess is this guy's going to walk because there's too much there's too much murder at stake to let this guy be uh, pinned for doing post-birth abortions. They don't want anybody calling it murder. They don't want that. At one time, the faithful city was full of judgment. Now, here's what, here's what I want you to do. Here's, it's what's always fair to do this. First Peter chapter 4 tells us this. For judgment must begin at the house of God first. So we can make this analogy with America. America at one time used to be a faithful city. Denominations sprang up in this, or they came from Europe, and they found fertile soil here in America, and they grew and grew, and they waxed prosperous, and they took that money back in the 1800s, early 1900s, and they formed missionary societies. And every denomination in this country was sending missionaries all over the world to preach the gospel and evangelize people. Just like, just like Jesus said in Acts chapter 1. It was, that was happening. We used to be a faithful city. You know what we turned into now? Now we're a harlot. Think about Barack Obama and his links in with Saudi America. Saudi America. Saudi Arabia. I'm tired. My brain is tired. Saudi Arabia. Might as well say Saudi America. Because that's what we're turning into. You know what, you know what has happened with America? We went and laid down in bed with the Saudis. We laid down in bed with the Chinese. Laid down in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. Bilderberg meetings coming up. We're going to lay down in bed with them too. The faithful city of America that God blessed and prospered, now we've become a harlot. And we've abandoned what we used to stand for in this country, morality. Because we knew that only by right morals can men truly be free. It used to be full of judgment. We used to be a nation of laws, a people of laws. Now we're not. Full of righteousness. Children could play, walk up and down the street, not have to worry about being picked up by some sodomite or some pedophile somewhere. Didn't have to worry about that. We had just decency in our cities and in our counties. Let's make this... And we can apply this to the churches, to the denominations. We can apply this to ministries. Ministries who at one time used to stand for the old book. They had righteousness and they had judgment in them. They were faithful to the words of God. But now that's not where the money is. The money is is out there with the hip hop and the Tony Joneses who say, you know what, let's celebrate fornication. I think it's great that these sixth grade students are kissing each other on the mouth, girls and girls. Let's celebrate that. Ministries, denominations, churches, movements, religious movements in this country used to be faithful, used to have a goal of saving sinners. Now it's all about popularity and power and money and dominionism and everything else everything that a harlot stands for that's what's happened in this country now now that we've pointed our finger at at the country and Barack and Tony Jones and Tony Campolo and Rick Warren and all these other people now that we've done that now let's point the finger here 
the faithful city right here you and I is it possible is it possible that a person starting out in faith can fall away in unbelief let's get it let's get some scriptures out I'll pull up the software King James pure Bible search software type in the word unbelief very interesting very interesting that the word unbelief is only found in the New Testament that's pretty interesting um let's look at oh let's see here. here's a few references in the Gospels let's look at uh, Romans chapter 4 verse 20 he's talking about Abraham in verse 18 it says who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness and I'm just going to ask you, a, ask you a simple question does belief have everything to do with the imputation of God's righteousness on us and that righteousness alone is what gives us eternal life and the answer is yes it is through faith that's I mean that's what we go around telling everybody I'm not saved by works I'm not saved by what I do I don't perform I believe what the Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I'm not talking about what we do and what we don't do. I'm talking about whether or not you still believe. How is the faithful city become an harlot? It used to be faithful. She used to believe. Now she doesn't believe anymore. What happened? What was Paul teaching us in Romans chapter 11 concerning the Jews, concerning Israel? What was it he was saying about the, the, um, the, the, the olive tree? He said, verse 19, Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Paul said in verse 20, Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. In other words, the reason why you got grafted in was because of faith, because you believed. You believed the Bible. You believed what God said. You didn't call God a liar. You didn't say, now, now in the original, it really says something else. You didn't say that. You just believed the Bible. But what happened to Israel? God pulled them off. Why? Unbelief. And he said, verse 23, and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. In other words, he says, you know what? They, they may not be believing now, but if they will believe, God will graft them back in. God will put the natural branches back on the olive tree. By the way, the 